Hey YouTube, John Secker here. Uh, so for about a year now I've been uh, shooting with the Syrup Genie system. So I've got a Syrup Genie, uh, a couple of Genie Minis, and I've also got the Tilt Bracket. And uh, I've also got a Magic Carpet Slider. And uh, I have lots of fun with it. They're, they're a fantastic system to do motion control, time lapses, and video. You can, if you've got all of this, you can do tracking, panning, and tilting all at the same time. Um, and the Magic Carpet Slider is an amazing uh, slider for both video and uh, time lapses. It's incredibly smooth, very strong, very stable. It's got two bars instead of one, so. It's a very stable, very smooth platform. You get a couple of tripods under it, you're not gonna have any worries. And I love uh, shooting with these, um, but there is one thing I don't have. It's called the Slingshot. It's the system that they use when uh, a magic carpet isn't gonna work for you. Either it's a very long distance or it's shooting over something. It's a cable system. So a couple of cables uh, are strung across with a carriage that rides along the cable and uses the genie as a tracker, as a tracking, um, with uh, ropes tied to either end and just crawls along the ropes sitting on top of this carriage. And underneath it you put your camera rig. You can put your, uh, put your genies, mini genie minis up underneath it and put your camera on top and it can tilt and pan uh, as you're moving across. But the slingshot, although it's a great system, it's a thousand bucks. And uh, I just wasn't willing to dump a thousand dollars in something that I wasn't sure how often I was gonna use. So uh, noodling around on the web, I found at least three different versions of a DIY um, slingshot. My favorite one, um, the, thought that, the one that I thought was um, the easiest to make uh, and the most stable and um, the most versatile one, I said, I'm gonna make one of those and see what I can do with it. And here's my version. Uh, it's a little different. It's a, I, can't, I, I decided to make a few improvements while I was going through it as I was thinking through it and comparing it to the original slingshot. I think I made some decent improvements. So it's not very hard at all. It's two 17 inch one by threes for the rails, two 17 inch one by twos for uh, the platform. Uh, I added a couple of shorter one by twos across the middle to give the Genie, um, the, the Genie Mini a more stable platform because the carriage part of itself is a sheet of acrylic, one top, one bottom. Um, and I wasn't comfortable with how much weight the acrylic alone would have to hold, so I put these two bars across to make it uh, stiffer and stronger. Um, I also think you don't have to use acrylic, I think quarter inch plywood would do the job just as well. Um, then you've got four rollers, one on each corner. The rollers on, they used on their video were a little different than mine, but this is what I found in my uh, home store. They were, I think they worked just fine. And when I took a look at this, the Genie Slingshot, I noticed it had hooks that come over the, whole, the, uh, the rollers. Um, and I guess those are there that if a roller comes off the rope, then the hook would catch it. So the whole carriage wouldn't fall down. Uh, I decided um, the cheapest and simplest solution was a carabiner on the end of its small chain that's attached uh, at each of the four corners. So I got four of these. And then what you do is you attach the carabiner to the rope that's going to hold up the roller so that if a roller comes off the rope, the carabiner will still hold it. The other thing the, the Genie Slingshot has is it has a, a line that you connect to your camera to hold on to the slingshot, um, to, I guess to keep your camera rig in place just in case there's some sort of cat catastrophic failure. Uh, so it doesn't fall. Um, 
I'm probably going to wind up just getting a carabiner that connects the camera to the two ropes. I haven't decided what I'm going to do there. Now, in the video where this was, where I got this idea, they didn't really explain uh, how they were attaching the genie and the camera rig on here. So what I did, come up here, is I took a, I think it was a three inch quarter 20 bolt, cut the head off and inserted it here with a couple of lock nuts facing out. I'm not sure if that's gonna come through on the video, especially because there's a big crack in the acrylic. It's another reason I wasn't too thrilled about using acrylic. I think um, quarter inch plywood might be better, but you can see there's a locking nut facing out and that's holding, that, uh, holding the bolt on there. And then what will happen is the, the, the bolt is screwed into the bottom of the genie, uh, screwed into the bottom of the genie, and then the genie is going to rest on these two, uh, on, on these two rails connected to the two structural supports, and that will hold up your camera rig, not the bolt, or not the bolt against the acrylic. That would fall right through. So that's why it's, that's why I put those extra supports there because I want this to be holding all of the weight against structural supports and not the acrylic. So that's the carriage. It's going to roll across two ropes, stretched across whatever I'm doing with the carabiners and chains connected onto it. And the genie providing the motive power to move across. For the ropes, I just picked up uh, my local home store, a uh, hundred foot nylon. Um, these fit into the rollers just fine. And I attached one end with a clip. And uh, I forgot what these are called. Um, they're used mostly to secure uh, washing lines, which is actually how I started. When I first saw the video, um, I think they were using um, plastic covered wires, which is great for, for uh, washer lines and things. Um, it was cheap, it was 10 bucks for 100 feet. Um, it was nice and secure, but I couldn't figure out how to tension one end. Um, they, I think they were using rafter straps. They didn't really explain how they were tensioning the rope, but I couldn't figure out um, a practical way in the field to tension it um, based on you have no idea how long of a rope you're going to need when you actually get out to shoot. Um, the only thing I could think of was um, to take one of these and when I get to the field, get it close to that, bend it, uh, create a loop and tighten it up with one of these and then have some sort of... Um, uh, I forgot what they're called, uh, the two hooks on either end and you tighten it up. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of, but then I said, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get a rope with a couple of ratchet straps, um, take off the straps and just keep the ratchets. So that's what I've got for my two posts that anchor my ropes to the tree. So one rope, the static, or excuse me, one anchor, the static side, just has a couple of eye bolts that are the exact same distance apart as the two rollers on my carriage and then on the other side I took a couple of ratchet straps and I cut off the ratchet or excuse me the strap part and then I attached the ratchet to the metal post now um, I didn't buy this I had this um, sitting around my workshop I had a couple of these sitting around my workshop but they're about 10 bucks uh, for something similar uh, about 10 bucks per at a home store uh, I like to reuse whatever I can. In fact, uh, the wood that I used on the carriage, I didn't buy. I just had it sitting around my shop. Um, but for this wood, you can expect to spend about five dollars. Um, I think a four inch, or excuse me, four foot one by three is about a little over two bucks uh, at my home store. Um, you can use one by three for the whole thing. They used one by two for. The, the center part of the carriage in this video, so that's what I use, but I don't see a reason you couldn't use one by three for the whole thing. So my ratchets here are attached directly to the pole. Let me get that in there 
with a bolt and let me tell you that was a pain getting that bolt in there or getting the 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 uh nut in there there's a nut and a large washer and you cannot access that from here without taking the whole thing apart so i slipped a bolt up under from up into the bottom it's up from the bottom and just barely had in place holding with my fingers uh, the nut in the washer and slid it up underneath and tighten it up uh, and then I could get a crescent wrench in there so I could tighten it up it was probably the hardest thing I had to do for this entire project was getting these things on um, depending on the ratchet straps you get you might have better access to that little area I don't know um, I got a set of four ratchet straps um, I used two on this post and I have two more that I will use to wrap around a tree and hold these posts in place so I got these uh, I think they're about $14 for all four uh, for a set of four so I'm giving you all these prices to tell you about how much I paid so um, I, like I said, I didn't pay for the wood, but I paid less than $5 for that. Um, the posts, you probably spend about $10 per. Ratchet straps, like I said, about $14 for a set. Um, the eye bolts were about a dollar a piece, so there's two of those. The acrylic sheet was about $13. Miscellaneous screws. Um, I didn't buy them for this. I had them sitting around in my shop, but you probably spent a couple of bucks on those. Um, by the way, I did take the advice of the video and I did countersink the screws uh, on the acrylic. Be really careful when screwing, to, screwing into acrylic or cutting it. It cracks real easy. <coughs> or get quarter inch plywood and do it that way. Uh, like I said, 10 bucks per for the rope. Uh, a dollar for the lock whatever that's called I forgot probably about a dollar for these again I, I had a couple of these sitting around uh, I did have to buy these and I think that was it oh and the carabiner and chains no idea a few dollars to do those again I had those sitting around I had them left over from a, a couple of Costco LED work lights the one way to hook them to the ceiling was a chain carabiner uh, system. I screwed them directly uh, to a joist so I didn't need them so I had them sitting around my shop and used them. And uh, probably a dollar for the bolt. Um, so that's about it. Um, oh one more thing I connected just so you can see I connected the chain to the rails with a couple of round staples that I hammered in. That's not going to come off unless there's a lot of weight. I don't anticipate using a lot of weight, um, a lot more weight than you see there. Especially, there's going to be four uh, connection points holding this thing up. So it's not like this one is going to hold up everything. There'll be at least four at all times. So uh, I'm going to take everything outside. I don't really have um, a subject to shoot yet. But I got a couple of trees in my yard. I'm going to connect them all up, or connect the, the bars to the trees, string the ropes, run a couple of tests, and see how well it works. Let's go try it. Okay, so now we've got, uh, we're outdoors, and I've got a couple of trees uh, about six meters apart that I'm doing just to test. I've got, um, got both my anchor bars. So this side is the static anchor bar. I've got just two eye hole uh, belt bolts on it. And this will be the static side, so the ropes will uh, attach first here. And this is the tension side. Now on this side I've got both of my ratchets. And they're the exact same distance apart as the eye holes, which is the exact same distance apart as the rollers. So it all will work very smoothly. So my first job is to take <coughs> my second set of ratchet straps, first one of my two second set, and attach each of these bars 
to a tree. So I'm gonna go do that. So we've got our ratchet end here attached by ratchet straps onto this tree wrapped around. Um, right now it's just hooked on the end of these fixed points. I'm probably gonna wind up drilling a hole or something to put these uh, into um, to make sure that they don't slip. But right now they're pretty solid. And then down here about six meters away is the fixed point end. So same ratchet straps, I'm hooked in the same points. So now I'm ready to start hooking up my rope. Got both of my ropes, all I have to do, connect to one eye bolt for one, and the other rope connects to the other one. That's it. That's it for the static side. Um, by the way, uh, I realized afterwards I bought both ropes same color. I wish I had bought one, one color, one another color that way. Uh, if I'm having a problem on the far end, I can tell which rope I'm, I'm dealing with. So let's learn by ropes of different colors, one for left, one for right. Okay, I've pulled my rope all the way across my length here. This is one of my uh, two sides. Um, I'm going to attach it to the ratchet strap. Now, it's 100 feet of rope, and I don't want to put all 100 feet through there to get it started. So I'm just going to put a loop in it and feed that loop through. Get it kind of tight here. And tight, and then start ratchet. So I'll get it too tight on one side without starting on the other side over there. All right, so I've got both ratchet straps um, pretty tight on both sides. They're about the same tautness, I guess that's a word. Um, about the same uh, tight on both sides, which is where I want it. I don't want anything leaning one side or the other. And um, I think we're ready to give it a try. So now we're ready to take the carriage and place it on the strings, place the rollers on the strings. Okay, moves pretty well. Uh, for safety, we're gonna take the carabiners on the chains and attach them onto the ropes. Um, one thing uh, I think is useful to note is the carabiner in the front should go after the roller. Carabiner in the back, again, should go after the roller. So if this is the direction I'm going, I want this first carabiner after the roller, second carabiner after the roller. That way the carabiner is not trying to, be, or the roller isn't running over the carabiner as it's moving. Now, of course, when you're rewinding things, uh, I will do that, but um, what I want to make sure is during the actual video or photos that the carabiner isn't getting away the roller. So, moving, moving fairly well. Very little friction. Not a lot of up and down bounce unless I'm pushing it. But, not bad. And I can send it down the line. Ah, see? <laughs> we see right there why we've got the safety features. So I sent it a little too hard, a little too rough, but it still managed to stay on. So I lost a, a wheel in the front here, but the carabiner is holding it. Same in the back here, the carabiner's holding it. So it's not falling off, and even if I lost the front wheel and the other back wheel, I haven't lost the rig off of the ropes. So that actually worked well. So safety test that I wasn't expecting to do yet, but that worked just fine. So let's try that again without pushing too hard this time. It rolls just great. So now I'm ready to start attaching the genie to my carriage. So I've got here my quarter inch, uh, quarter 20 bolt, but I've put the 3 8 inch adapter on it. And take the genie carriage. 
tighten it up. Now, hopefully one of the things you notice in the video is that the extra two uh, one by two boards that I put on here, uh, the, the Genie carriage is sitting on top of those. So that's taking the weight and transferring it to these supports rather than the plastic, the acrylic shape. I felt much safer about it that way. Then we take the Genie, attach it on. Now we've got to tie the ropes on either end to either tree. I had a clip that I somehow lost where I actually programmed uh, the genie uh, to move all the way down the line and I recorded it. Uh, somehow I lost that footage, uh, but this is the genie actually moving down very smoothly. Uh, it's carrying the whole thing down without any issues. There were some slight hesitations. I don't I don't really know how to say it. It's just it, it would sort of jitter back and forth, but nothing noticeable. I was just being very, very uh, attentive to everything that was happening. And here you can see as it's moving, this is some sped up footage, just because it goes really slow. Um, some sped, sped up footage of it moving down and some more sped up footage of it uh, going back. I did a number of tests. I was very happy with my results. It pulled the, the, the weight the whole time without any issues whatsoever. So I'm very happy with it. Um, you can still see it going here. I'm running a few more tests. Uh, I did run a test with the two Genie Minis and the tilt bracket hanging underneath. It performed wonderfully. Um, it's very smooth. Uh, no issues. The weight doesn't seem to be an issue. I, when I put the whole gear on here, it still held plenty fine. You might want to tighten a little bit more if you've got more weight. But it's performing very well. I had a bit of a breeze coming through here earlier, and I didn't see an issue. It wasn't really wobbling or anything. Uh, I don't have a time lapse to do, because frankly, all you're going to look at is grass. Big deal. <laughs> so, just from the performance of what I've got so far, I'm very happy with this. For less than a hundred bucks. Um, ish. Depending on how far you want to go. Um, I got the equivalent of a DIY slingshot. Not bad. Let's keep it.